648 right now, time for the morning rush. Copper thieves in Española recently left homes, businesses, and even emergency services without access to phones. Last Friday, someone cut off five to six feet of copper wire that was on the Santa Clara Pueblo. The outage included the Española Police Department. Now, emergency dispatch was back up by the end of the weekend. The new CYFD Policy Advisor Council is setting some of its highest priorities. The new panel created by the governor to fix CYFD met for the first time yesterday. The council made up of the former Supreme Court Justice who once ran CYFD and advocates who have worked with families hopes to bolster the workforce to reduce caseloads and recruit more foster families. The state is now pushing to keep a Blake's Lauterberger employee accused of beating and stabbing a homeless man behind bars until trial. The worker, Darnell Drake, claims that he acted in self-defense, but he is now charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Erica. And here's a look at our school day forecast. It's 48 this morning, so it is chilly out there. You're going to want some warmer layers. We'll be warm by the afternoon, but a bit windier than yesterday. Chimayo residents still don't have any answers about whether they'll be getting a new post office. A fire destroyed in the Chimayo post office in February. Since then, residents have been driving to the nearest post office in Santa Cruz. At a community meeting last night, Representative Teresa Ledger Fernandez told residents she's calling on the U.S. Postal Service to rebuild the office. The Albuquerque Film Office hopes that its new website can help make film productions more sustainable. The website for filmmakers includes information on where productions can donate old sets and costumes and where they can dispose of waste in an eco-friendly way and more. Some local students are getting help to take their game to the next level. Students from across New Mexico are competing in this year's eSports state championships. Some have even been awarded scholarships. The state championships continue through Saturday and are open to the public. Erica. And here's a look at our threat index. It is moderate today as most of the state will see high fire danger and windy conditions in northeast New Mexico. A jury found British pop star Ed Sheeran did not steal parts of a Marvin Gaye classic. Heirs of Motown co-writer Ed Townsend accused Sheeran of stealing from Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On for his 2014 song Thinking Out Loud. The jury found Sheeran not guilty of plagiarism yesterday. Marvin Gaye's heirs were not part of that case. The ex-leader of the Proud Boys and three other members were convicted of seditious conspiracy for their roles in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Federal prosecutors argued the defendants plotted to unlawfully use force and the crowds to keep former President Trump in office. The four defendants that were found guilty are now facing up to 20 years in prison. A 30-year-old with a history of mental illness died on Monday after being placed in a chokehold in New York City as after witnesses say that he was threatening other passengers. Witnesses say that Jordan Neely was acting erratically and making verbal threats. It's when a 24-year-old Marine veteran stepped in. You can see him holding Neely in a chokehold. Police questioned the 24-year-old veteran, but released him shortly after. Erica. All right, a check on traffic. Maps are clear. No slowdowns or accidents to tell you about. And tracker is going south on I-25 near the Big Eye. Everything seems to be moving at speed. Fishermen in Florida had quite the impressive catch when they reeled in a great white shark. Video from the Sudden Strike Offshore Adventures Diving Center shows the fishermen reeling in the giant fish about 20 miles out of Ponce Inlet yesterday. The fishermen claimed to have chased down the shark for about a mile. This is the second great white encounter in Florida in recent months, excuse me, as trackers recently spotted an 11 foot, 1200 pound great white in March. Quite Time now for the five facts. At number five, some of this week's eSports championship competitors are getting help to take their game to the next level. Students from across New Mexico are competing in this year's eSports state championships. Some students have been awarded scholarships too. The state championships continue through Saturday and are open to the public. At number four, the Albuquerque Film Office hopes that its new website can help make film productions more sustainable. The website for filmmakers that includes information on where the productions can donate old sets and costumes, where they can dispose of waste in an eco-friendly way and more. Productions are also able to see local companies that offer sustainable services. The city hopes that this site will help productions reduce their carbon footprints. And at number three, it is going to be a windier afternoon. Wind is no problem this morning, but those winds will pick up after 1 p.m. We'll see gusts up to around 30 to 35 in the metro area. And some parts of the state could see wind gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And number two, copper thieves in Española, they have left homes, businesses, and even emergency services without access to phone services. Last Friday, someone cut off five to six feet of copper wire on the Santa Clara Pueblo. Well, that left many homes and businesses on the Pueblo and in western Española without landline service. 
The outage included the Espanola Police Department and the Santa Clara Tribal Police. Emergency dispatch was back up by the end of the weekend. Uh, Espanola Police say that they are taking steps to prevent this from happening again and ask anyone with information about the copper theft to call them. And at number one, the new CYFD Policy Advisory Council is setting some of its highest priorities. The new panel created by the governor to fix CYFD met for the first time yesterday. The agency is facing public scrutiny and lawsuits over the state's most vulnerable children slipping through the cracks and in the worst cases dying. The council hopes to bolster the workforce to reduce caseloads and recruit more foster families. The governor's executive order also called for an out of state audit to take a deep dive into the department's practices and the creation of a grievance system for families. The secretary says those initiatives are already in the works.